these are the 20 best exercises for optimal muscle loading. So what does that mean? Optimal muscle loading means that uh, you're going to do an exercise and you're going to invest a certain amount of energy in that exercise and that energy will give you the biggest percentage of load on your target muscle. So optimal loading would not be an exercise that requires two or three times as much weight as the other exercise does, but gives you no more load on that muscle, right? It's an inefficient way of loading a muscle. We're all about efficiency, getting the most load with the least wasted effort. So who are the Brig 24? They are for pretty much anyone who does resistance exercise, general gym goers. Competitive athletes can also benefit from this. And by competitive athletes, I'm talking about tennis players, baseball players, soccer players, football players, anything that requires a stronger body would benefit from the Brig 20. Now, of course, if you're playing a skill, a skill sport, then you need to also work on your skills, right? So you can't just, let's say, do the Brig 20, nor can you just lift weights, by the way, and be a good basketball player or a good shot putter or a good you still have to work on the technique and the skills and the drills that are very specific to your kind of sport. But a stronger body will always be a better body when it comes to competition in sports. Bodybuilders would be key, right? Because it's all about efficiency in bodybuilding. You're going to get faster results, better results when you use an exercise that gives you a bigger percentage of the, lo of the load you're using. But even people that are just physique development enthusiasts, people that just like being buff, but not necessarily looking to be competitive bodybuilders, of course, we're talking to you. Um, senior citizens, youths, women, people doing physical therapy. Now, you know, a lot of what we talk about here is aimed at a, at a non-physical therapy audience. But the fact remains that everything that we talk about in a program is the safest is the most healthy way of doing an exercise. We're all about not straining joints. We're all about not creating unnecessary load on the spine. We're all about not using any more weight than you have to use, right? That's what physical therapy should be about, right? Now, you might get a physical therapist and say, oh, you've got a torn rotator cuff, let's exercise it. Well, I would argue, and this I think you will understand the sense of this, if something is torn, it's probably better to let it heal first before you start loading it and exercising it, right? It's like if you have a sunburn, the last thing you want is to go out in the sun, right? So let something heal first, right? And then start strengthening it so that you're less predisposed to that same injury again in the future. All of these exercises are joint friendly. This is what it's all about is doing things in the most natural way possible. So if you have an existing injury, joint injury, um, you may be limited just because you may have some scar tissue there. You may have some limited range of motion. But these movements are the safest that those joints can do, right? So you're not going to find a better movement, right? You're not going to find a safer movement if your joint is already damaged and scarred, right? You're still most likely to use these movements. These are the safest movements for a joint that either isn't injured or has been injured. Assuming you can tolerate that because you've been injured before. But I think we take the guesswork out. In other words, you don't have to wonder if maybe there's a better movement, right? Now, there may be a movement that hurts that joint less, but it's not a better movement for that muscle, right? I mean, obviously, our goal is to work that muscle, whichever the target muscle is, in the safest joint movement possible. And, of course, if you're all about speed, and who is it, right? We want the fastest results in the shortest amount of time, right? Well, that's all about efficiency. If you're going to do an exercise that's only going to deliver 70% of the load to the muscle as compared to a better exercise, right? Then it's going to, you're going to, you're losing 30% of the speed, right? So the best speed is going to be had with the most percentage of efficiency exercises. So that's what we're all about is these are the best for these reasons. So the first body part we'll talk about are the pectorals. Okay. And and in, in the uh, in my eight part webinar series, the first three parts we talked about the physics, the anatomy, and the neurology. So the exercises that are part of the Break Twenty conform with those rules. That's the thing is we have to understand that there are rules that dictate what makes an exercise better than or less good than another exercise. Right. So 
You'll see me talking about those here, but remember, if you've seen those, that eight part webinar series, you'll understand why these things are the best.